I apologize, Charlie, darling, but tonight I'm very busy with things of a private matter. Charlie stood there, dumbfounded. I, well, I... It was late in the evening, and what an evening it was. Ever since the leader of the Angel Forces, Adam, announced the new six-month period for purges, hell had fallen to chaos. And most, if not all, demons were nervous, only made worse by the media who kept repeating the same message of absolute mayhem. <laughs> they loved it. We have six months until the next purge, and some of my acquaintances are having a little get-together. But... No buts, darling. With a smug grin, the radio demon placed a finger on the girl's mouth to shut her up. But as if on cue, Vagi now interrupted. But we need your help with the new rivals! A bunch of demons apparently seeking redemption were causing trouble, and usually the radio demon threatening them either caused them to flee the premises or at least make them calm down. Alistair scoffed. Ask that obscene fellow for support. I really have to get going now. Nope. Sorry, sweetheart. I have a date tonight. Chuckled Angel Dust. Jealous? In your dreams. It was such a strange image, seeing Alistair and Angel Dust leave through the Hasbin Hotel's front door together, only to go into separate directions once they reached the street. Alistair rarely partook in anything involving the other demon lords. They were beneath him, and yet powerful enough to simply not bother. After all the last time he fought one of them, his suit got ruffled up and finding a good tailor in hell was difficult. Well, at least a tailor that catered to... A well, at least a tailor that met Alistair's high expectations. Luckily, the invite was from a demoness the radio demon almost respected. You, Lady von Strauss, were the only demon Alistair would consider almost an equal. Minus Lucifer himself, of course. You're part of a demon species which already was unbelievably powerful. Your primary sin in life had been gluttony. And while usually the sins were beaten to their utmost definition, you were a more classic depiction of it. You were a powerful consumption demon, as beautiful as you were terrifying. As despite the absolute vileness of your kin, you managed to maintain your grace. You and your kind had the ability to absorb other demons into your body. A skin-to-skin -skin touch alone was enough to melt someone into you. This allowed you to partake in all the delicious energy and life force of your victim, since there would be nothing left of them. And worst of all, partaking in the demon's flesh caused a substantial mutation in consumption demons, making them more powerful. Indeed, you managed to reach the spot by embracing your sin. No one dared to get in touching range of you. After all, at any moment you could activate your demonic power and eat whoever you deemed a delicious meal. You were hosting your yearly post-purge ball, an event attended by any demon who had most of their brain cells intact. It was sophisticated, especially for hell, and that's why Alistair had so much interest in it. It reminded him of his time as a human, beautiful and enjoyable at the same time. But there was another reason Alistair swallowed his dignity for a single evening and put on a fake smile, and that was to manipulate you. Your power was your greatest ally and your greatness weakness after all. 
And the reason you left his operations and deals alone was the simple fact that he managed to get you to fall in love with him. An undying loyalty connecting the two of you. And all the Radio Demon had to do was pretend he could feel the emotion of love and fake sexual attraction to you. Yes, despite everything, you were a hopeless romantic. So much so, that at any point, Alistair could kill you. But, as of right now, you are useful to him. As the territory you controlled was surrounding his in an almost perfect circle. He used the balls to take just a little more from you each time. Of course, this would mean that you would expand, causing more wars that kept him safe. All he had to do was watch and enjoy the show. With a smile, Alistair walked past your guards. Your ball was always in the same building, so well defended. Even the angels didn't bother attacking it during a purge. And it's quite frankly, it would take too long. And why waste an entire purge on a couple of hundred demons if they could slaughter thousands in the time it would take them to breach? It was a simple compromise. Though still an embarrassment for heaven. The impressive building was a luxurious manor. Its interior being shiny, clean, and kept in mostly white and red colors. He was fashionably late, and as he entered the grand hall where classical music was playing, at the posh laughter of countless high-ranking high-society demons could be heard, his eyes fell immediately upon you. You were sitting on a silver throne with red velvet padding, in a sophisticated and imposing position. Alistair's smile became toothy as he watched a line of suitors, one of them being so bold as to bow before you. With an almost disgusted expression, you held up your hand before his face, allowing him the grace to kiss it. The obvious danger being palpable and his hesitation a borderline insult to you. In hell your body was slim, but not lanky. You had white hips and a wonderful soft bosom. Your hair was so long it reached down to your knees. It was raven black, your eyes glowing in a seductive pink. Thanks for that, it was enchanting to any man who felt attraction towards the fairer sex. Your lips were beautiful red, and your teeth came in two rows and were razor sharp. You even had a thin, long tail, just as pearly white as your skin, ending in a harp-shaped bone plate. Noticing the demon's hesitation, your eyes flashed, and even though the look you gave the demon was less than a second, Alistair could feel that you had seen him, which made him smile. You snapped your fingers impatiently. Finally, the demon pressed his lips on your naked hand. But... As he attempted to pull away, he could feel the skin of his mouth stretch. Horrified, his eyes widened. An uncanny pull was felt. Screams muffled by his own skin as it melted into yours. You turned your hand around, his body feeling like honey around your hand. It was just as malleable. For a moment, all he could see were your fingers, and then nothing as his eyes were absorbed. You pushed your hand deeper into his face. A stomach-turning gurgling noise was heard as his body dissolved into you. 
and for the sweet, sweet moment of your flesh touching his brain, you could feel his fear, but also something else. The singular blissful second where yours and his own thoughts became one. A truly orgasmic feeling, and the only comfort that would accompany the demon as he was being devoured and slowly becoming you. Once his thoughts had become yours, he stopped moving entirely, and like a loving mother you embraced his limp corpse, consuming the rest of the demon's body. The entire process took a mere minute, and the other suitors standing around you had stone-cold facial expressions, still enchanted by the power of your looks. They would risk it too, just not yet. And so they quietly stood there, until you noticed Alistair, for real this time. You finally allowed them another glance at your beautiful eyes, once again closing them to, to the power you had. That being, giving men pleasure with just a mere glance, you kept your eyes closed most of the time. Yet at making people feel good when they weren't making you feel good in return. Using your minions' eyes to see instead. Your minions were primarily a race of hellborn demons, usually nothing more than pests. They manifested as floating eyes. With long, sharp tails, they could float thanks to the gases that filled their unique eyeballs and they fed through tiny holes in their tail spikes. Having absorbed their queen long, long ago, you had become the leader of the hive. They were your precious pets. First and final line of defense. You walked past your suitors without saying a word. Alistair, meanwhile, had descended some stairs that led to the entrance balcony. With a friendly smile, he approached you. The entire party watched in awe as he took Alistair's hand in yours, taking on the first pose of a waltz. So many things had just happened, and not a single word had been said. Your eternal beauty with the rapturous sophistication of Alistair. So many cocks were moving. So many thoughts were being had. The display of you mercilessly killing a demon who wanted nothing more than to be your husband. To you touching another being without them suffering the same consequences. And then enchanting them with a dance, a slow waltz to truly begin the evening. <laughs> ah, this entire thing was a vanity project to you. And it always worked. As you and Alistair danced through the middle of the lavishly decorated ballrooms, his lips twitched, incredibly unnoticeable, but you knew him too well. He was mouthing the words, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Alistair was a talented dancer, and he could have done the entire dance routine just like that, but with you in his arms, he didn't want to risk even the tiniest of mistakes. Though that was a small prize for the sophisticated atmosphere alone. All the demons present acted like high society leads in the overworld, rather than sex crave billionaire children. It was... oh so pleasant. After the song had ended, you graciously guided him to the buffet. Mountains on top of mountains of just the most sinful delicacies. But one of them made Alistair blush. Humans. Free, in fact. Cooked to perfection. Not even the cannibal cafes of hell could procure human meat. 
usually sufficing with the excuse, we're demons, you're eating a demon, so that counts. They more often than not were tougher and or drier than human, not to mention the taste of soot and smell of sulfur. I know, my dear Alistair, that you're a connoisseur of long pig. I know what a connoisseur of long pig you are, my dear Alistair. So I went out of my way and hired a group of imps to get these. Oh, darling, you always surprise me. After filling his plate with long pick medallions made out of decently sized slabs of meat with sweet berry sauce topped with a layer of finely aged cheese, you watched him eat. And even though all his smiles, all his presentation was fake, just for the benefits you gave him, his ears ever so slightly twitched in delight as this exquisite meal. A bead of sweat ran down your neck, watching his Adam's apple move as he swallowed. Truly, an excellent surprise you had made him. What about you, my darling? Aren't you hungry? He asked you with a glance. You chuckled, hiding your face with a beautifully decorated paper fan. <laughs> I apologize, my beloved Alistair, but... As you know, I just ate. He grinned. That you did, my dear. That you did. After some dry political talk with the present demon nobles, Alistair finally managed to talk you into retreating into your study with him. Unlike the rest of the manor, your study was made from a dark, neatly polished wood. With a well-lit fireplace opposite to the entrance, giving the place just enough sparse orange light to be cozy. Shadows danced across the walls, some of which Alistair summoned himself, quietly and unnoticeably, to create just the right atmosphere. Both of you walked past countless bookshelves, hand in hand. From experience, Alistair knew that a third of these were long and rather dry romance novels. Another third was fantasy, but the third was an accumulated knowledge about hell written from her first-hand experiences, making this collection rather expensive. No one was here but a single of your floating eyeballs to allow you to see... But after a few moments of enjoying your lover's presence, Alistair smiled. Darling, I must say, you always throw the best of parties. The blush on your face, followed by you snapping your fingers to order your minion out, was a great reward for giving you a compliment. You opened your eyes, looking directly into Alistair's. My dear Alistair, I still have no idea how you can withstand my gaze. And yet, I find that incredibly attractive about you. The answer to your question was simple. He didn't feel any real attraction towards you. For anyone, in fact. Oh, but, my darling, you do have enchanted me, haven't you? I wouldn't be here otherwise, would I? Your lip quivered excitedly. Uh, this man had wrapped you around his finger. He was the only one, the only one you'd get away with it as well. He made you feel like a woman. And retreated you like you felt. You deserved. Your right hand noticeably twitched before it grabbed his hand again, giving Alice just enough time to mentally prepare. I wonder how many women took this hand and theirs before me, be it for a deal or something else. You teased with a light smirk. 
I'd kill them all for that crime. Gently you place your head on his chest. <sighs> oh, Alistair, I wish we could stay like this forever. He deadpanned. Thankfully, you had your eyes lovingly closed for a moment. His face returned to a smile after you turned to look at him. Do you have any desires? Any needs you'd like me to fulfill? Well, I'd like to talk about this, um, nuisance, Sir Pentius, if you don't mind. There was only a slight crack in your expression. Clearly, he was supposed to say something else. But still, I'm listening, my dear. I have recently invested time and effort into a business that just coincidentally is rather close to his territory. Though it is neutral ground, he often just makes a bother out of his presence. You are the supplier of his weapons. Could you make sure they jam every once in a while? You smirked. It shall be done, my dear Alistair. And don't worry, I know how to hide the little sabotage. Oh, that's just wonderful, my dear. Just wonderful. Charlie was running his ears with worry about the snake demon. Maybe if he blew himself up every more than that. Maybe if he blew himself up even more than he already was, she'd shut up and stop bothering him about Serpentius. You place a hand on his chest, your fingertips gently sliding over the soft fabric of his clothes. Such a shame you're still dressed, you muttered, your eyes darting to his face. Alistair felt that this little favor wasn't worth the effort of taking you, but he needed to keep up appearances. Alistair suppressed a heavy sigh by saying, Darling, would you allow me to steal a kiss from you? Of course, my beloved Alistair. All you need to do is ask. And you shall receive. And a moment later... You felt his hot, warm, and unbelievably soft lips press onto yours. His kiss, while calculated, was gentle. He carefully placed a hand on your hip, and the radio demon made sure his red glowing eyes were focused only on your pink ones. He knew how to just show enough pretend enchantment from your abilities to keep you on your toes, while also giving you the comfort of feeling like you were getting what you wanted. And yet still, as always, your tongue was the first to curiously prod against his lips. Suppressing a wave of disgust, the radio demon allowed it entrance. Your tongue was large, slimy and spongy like a slug. Or at least that's how it felt to Alistair. The only solace was the fact that it at least tasted like expensive wine. Your beverage of choice. Meanwhile, your hand snaked up to the collar of his jacket. Fingers almost boldly undoing the buttons. His right eyebrow noticeably twitched. Though, thanks to your relationship, it had reached a point where he should just let you undress him. God, how he wanted to scoff at you and push you away, but he couldn't. Thankfully, his expression of disgust was interpreted by you as a sign of eagerness. Your hands pulled at a suit, fingertips now gliding over his exposed chest. I want your flesh inside me. You beg needily. After releasing your mouth from his. And he smiled. Before forcing himself to undress you. Then I shall oblige. 
My darling. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. Special thank you to my lovely channel members Anura, Chloe Rombo, Cherry Red Bunny, Days Nut, Nicodemus D, Cat Cove, Kaobis, Bit Bit, Zings, Melofia, Sleep Town, Hella, Next Wrist, AJ Anime Girl, and Hopeful. Your support is greatly appreciated, my darlings.